Coach Gus Malzahn, and after his comments, we will open it up for questions. Yeah, we're, we're very excited to be here at the Music City Bowl. Uh, we have a big alumni base here in Nashville. I know we're expecting a big, big crowd. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to the leadership of the bowl. It's been outstanding. Uh, the hospitality has been excellent. Uh, the place to stay for our players, I mean, the meeting rooms and everything with that has really been top shelf. Um, you know, really excited to play in this game, playing a very good Purdue team. I got a chance to watch them against Ohio State, um, you know, when I was at home and very impressed. I've always been impressed with their coaching staff. They do a super job of playing to their strengths. Uh, very well coached, um, you know, really looking excited. We're very excited to, to play in this game and, and play a, a very good opponent. Okay, we have a microphone, so if you'll raise your hand for the microphone because we were recording this for transcription purposes. So if you'll raise your hand, we'll get the microphone for you for questions. So we'll go ahead and start questions. Will's got the microphone. If you have a question, just let him know. Quick one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coach Balzan, uh, what do you look at as the big key to tomorrow's game? What is it that you're going to have to do to attack the uh, Purdue defense? Yeah, I, I, you know, we're really going to have to uh, to do a, do a super job uh, defensively of keeping away from the big play. Uh, they do a great job with their scheme uh, attacking uh, defenses. Uh, and then, of course, offensively, I think the big thing is, is protecting the football. You know, you, you always worry after 30 uh, days of playing a game, you know, as far as all the little things that sometimes you take for granted. And, uh, well, you know, we know we're playing a very hungry team, um, and we're going to have to play really good sound football. Gus, is this a game where you just go and play with Jared Stidham, treat it like this is a regular season game, or do you try to prepare for the future and give another quarterback some playing time in this game at some point? You know, I think the very first thing is, I mean, we're here to win the game, and we're playing a very good opponent. And so from a coaching staff standpoint, you know, that's our approach. And of course, Jarrett's been our guy. Um, you know, he's had a, a very good career uh, the last two years with the thing he's done. So, you know, we're just trying to build around his strengths. You know, as far as younger guys go, we'll see how the game unfolds and everything with that. But bottom line is we're trying to win the game. For Coach Malzahn, how much does it help having Jarrett for this game? You know, young man, you know, there's a lot of people who are saying, I'm going to the NFL, I'm not going to play the bowl. Yeah. You do have him available. How much does that help? Yeah, I think it helps greatly. I mean, you know, when you've got your, your leaders that are playing the bowl, and you're exactly right, around college football this day and time, there's a lot of uh, players that don't play in certain bowl games uh, for certain reasons. But uh, we're very fortunate to, to not have that happen to us, of course. Jared being our quarterback for the last two years and, and being our offensive leader, I think is, is very uh, important, um, you know, to this game. Uh, this question's for Gus Malzahn. Uh, coach, you're not, okay. you're an offensive minded coach as is coach Jeff Brom. Just what do you appreciate about Jeff Brom and his offense when you watch it? Yeah. Uh, you know, Jeff's one of the best in the business. I've been watching him for a long time and, you know, Offensive guys, you know, like to, to, or at least me personally, I like to watch innovative guys. And I've stole some things from him. I mean, he just does a super job wherever he's been. Um, very impressed. Like I said, probably the biggest thing is how he plays to his strengths. You know, he builds around his strengths, get the ball to his best players, and he finds ways to, to get guys open that uh, defenses are focusing on. So just does a good job of, of keeping things off balance and, and very creative. Jeff, can you talk about what it means to have Tyler Trent here? Well, Tyler Trent is truly an inspiration to our football team, uh, and really now to the entire nation. I think uh, someone to overcome uh, the battles that he has and always have a great spirit and great smile on his face, uh, really approaches life in the right way. I think uh, we've for sure gained a lot of strength <coughs> through <coughs> excuse me, having him around as much as he can, and I know really everyone's gained strength uh, by his presence, uh, you know, and I think vice versa. I think he's uh, enjoyed being a part of uh, not only our football team, but uh, 
he feels the love from the entire nation, including all the teams that we've played. So we're happy to have him here. Uh, he's a big part of our football team. He means a lot to our players, and uh, uh, we want him to have an enjoyable experience uh, come tomorrow afternoon. For Jeff, I'm guessing you might not have minded if Jared decided to sit out this game. What <laughs> challenges does he pose uh, as you try to defend him? Yeah, coach didn't ask me my opinion on that one. But, uh, yes, we, you know, he's a great quarterback, uh, and he has been. Uh, he had a tremendous year last year. Uh, he can see the field. He can throw the football. He's got a great arm. He's a good athlete. Uh, he, he's tough. And uh, what we're going to have to do is anytime you face a quarterback that that's talented, you've you got to get some pressure on him. You've got to find a ways to make him feel uncomfortable. Uh, you got to give him some looks maybe he hasn't seen before. All those things are going to matter. I think if he's comfortable in the pocket and uh, Coach Melzon has him mixing things up and uh, uh, he feels uh, like he's in charge and command, we'll have a long day. So it's going to be important that uh, we do our part and uh, just try to create some pressure uh, and make him feel uncomfortable. Jeff, just how you, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you feel about your defensive line after Lorenzo's injury and how, how those players may have settled into into their roles for this game? Well, we're going to have some new guys possibly out there, and uh, they're going to have to step up to the challenge. This is uh, really, to me, this is going to be the key to the game, is uh, who's going to win the trenches. And we've got our hands full uh, on both sides of the ball. These guys are big, they're strong, they're physical. Um, and we have some guys that need to step up and, um, and do their part. And really, like I said, it's about trying to create some pressure on defense, uh, getting a little push with the defensive line, uh, creating some type of mismatch if we can. Uh, and on, at the same time on the offense, we've got to protect their big guys, and they're big, and they're strong, and they're athletic, and uh, they're very disruptive. So that's going to be the key of the game, and uh, we're going to have to fight hard and, and play like heck to find a way to get that done. And, and, and Gus, Ron, your impressions of Rondell Moore, what he's done yeah. in his freshman season? Yeah, I think he's one of the best players in all of college football. Um, he demands attention, and anytime you have to get special attention, to certain players, it opens up other things. Uh, but like I said, they do a super job of getting him the ball different ways, getting him open, handing the ball. Uh, he's electric, and you can tell he's a, a very confident player. Um, you know, that's pretty unusual for a freshman. Jeff, you will not get to the preseason promise of 50, but does a game like this, you know, ask for maybe a trick play or two and with the amount of time you've had to prepare, and does it kind of set up for that for you? Well, I think you're, you're probably looking at two coaches that like the trick plays. And, uh, you know, when you have this much time to prepare, you end up putting in probably more than you, than you need to. And uh, without question, you've got to have a lot of bullets ready to go. Uh, what happens when you, when you face teams that know that, Teams could be creative in that way. Uh, they normally defend it pretty well. <laughs> so, you know, we've got to pick and choose uh, when we want to do something. But uh, creating big plays is important, and sometimes a little trickery uh, can go a long way. But if the other teams prepare for it, uh, it's a little harder than you think. This is uh, for Gus. Uh, your running backs were a little bit banged up at times this season. Has the uh, break helped that? And how big a deal would it be? to have a good game rushing the ball tomorrow. Yeah, uh, of course, you know, at times we've had trouble run, running the football like we've talked about this year, but uh, all of our running backs are healthy. I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, all of them, um, you know, will be ready to play. Gus, I'm sure you've detailed in great detail to the uh, Auburn reporters just your philosophy as an offensive coach. Just to follow up on my offensive question before, who are some coaches that influenced your offense and just how did you craft your philosophy as an offensive play caller? Yeah, you know, I never really got a chance to learn uh, under any one person. You know, I was a head high school coach, I guess, my second year and uh, bought the Delaware Wing T book and kind of went, went by it word for word for about two or three years. and. Then went to another high school and kind of transitioned that in the shotgun and stole different ideas from a lot of really uh, successful high school coaches in the state of Arkansas is really my foundation. And then, of course, Steve Spurrier, you know, is a mentor of mine. I've really tried to 
study him for a long time and uh, as far as that. But I've kind of just, uh, uh, you know, successful high school coaches and, and probably Steve Spur, the, the ones that really influenced me the most. Jeff, it's, it's his announcement to make, but do you have an idea of what Marcus Bailey will do after this season? Has he kind of given you that indication, or, or have you are you planning to sit down with him maybe after this game? Well, Marcus has uh, put in the paperwork to kind of see where his standing will be uh, at the end of the season. Uh, you know, we anticipate having him back, but in the end, uh, we want to do what's best for him. Uh, so we'll sit down and, and talk about the feedback we've gotten back and, and, and try to make the best decision for him. I know he's a guy that loves playing at Purdue. Uh, he does want to play at the next level. Uh, he's probably our best defensive player. He's just very athletic, uh, can run to the ball, do a lot of things for us. So uh, in the end, we'll uh, let the thing play out a little bit, but we'll sit down and talk, and whatever's best for him, we'll, we'll advise him on that. Gus, you mentioned how in the past all coaches, they steal or, or borrow ideas offensively. Have you borrowed any new ideas for this game just in these few weeks you've taken over and prepared for this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> this is for both coaches. We're seeing more and more players as the years go on sit out bowl games. As a coach, how do you manage that process for players who are on the fence and can't decide what to do? Well, I think uh, it's important in today's age to uh, communicate with your guys and uh, you know, give them your opinion, and obviously they're going to give you theirs. And in the end, you've got to do uh, what's be best for the player. Each, each person's different. Every case is different. Uh, you know, their careers sometimes are riding on it, and sometimes uh, you know, if they're projected to, to go extremely high and they want to – uh, move on. Uh, I think while you would love for them to play, I, I think you, you'll support whatever decision that they make. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, about communication, like Coach said. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's an individual decision. And I think each uh, individual player, they, they make the best decision for themselves and their future. And from a coach's standpoint, um, you know, I think that's just the, uh, this day and time in college football. Gus, can you talk a little about the senior leadership on this team? Yeah. Um, things got dark, and they kept pushing and yeah. kept things going. Yeah, our, our senior leadership has been outstanding. Uh, you know, we've had some ups and downs, and, you know, the, our, the guys really, uh, the seniors really held everything together. Um, you know, they played hard every single game, played together, and, uh, you know, the credit really uh, is, is with the seniors. Jeff Brom's talked about the early signing period and how he feels it benefits Purdue just from your standpoint. Is the early signing period something that you, you like for, from Auburn's standpoint? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, any time you do something new, I think there's a learning period. That first year definitely was. We were playing the SEC championship game. We kind of lost a week of recruiting, you know, compared to everybody else. This year was a little different. But, uh, you know, I think it's uh, – I think there's good – uh, about it you know you get the majority of your class signed you can really focus on really the next year's class um, and that's what we did last year we'll do the same thing this year but uh, you know it, it's it's a little bit different but uh, like I said you, you get more and more comfortable with it um, you know as the years go on Gus, I know you've discussed a little bit about Kenny Dillingham and his game day responsibilities for this game. Is he going to be on the sideline for you, or is he going to be in the press box? And how will the communication be on yeah, game day? Yeah, Kenny will be in the booth. Uh, that's what he did at Memphis for Mike Norvell. And, you know, really this game is going to be more about, you know, recalling down and distance situations. Um, you know, really he's just still getting familiar with our players and, even though we're similar offensively, you know, me and me and Mike, uh, there is some differences. So he'll just really assist more uh, this game uh, than he will, you know, fast forward to next year. Any more questions for the coaches? Well, Coach Malzahn, Coach Brown, we wish you both the best of luck in tomorrow's game. Thank you. Thank you for your time. 
And up next, we're going to hear from coordinators from both teams.